What's up guys? We're gonna show you how we use our Synology NAS to connect when we're not in the office. I've got this thing set up so that I can map network drives and I've also got it set up so that I can use a custom URL to just jump into any browser and then be right there in my you know desktop environment, my DSM uh, desktop for my NAS. And I've done it with flaminglasersword.com but you guys can use whatever URL you have. So if you already have a domain, uh, if, if not, go ahead and register one. We'll show you how to do it. Now, if you're an admin, uh, you, you will wanna check out Active Directory Server. It basically allows you to log on. Um, you can be the domain controller, you know, apply updates and all that sort of thing. So if you're an IT admin, check out Active Directory Server. Um, there's also Drive, which allows you to install an application on your computer uh, and then access your Synology NAS pretty much anywhere. It's, it's almost like a, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft OneDrive or, you know, Google's Drive or um, even Dropbox or whatever, when you can have a little thing there where you share your files, they'll all appear on your NAS under your, um, I guess, your username. And all the users on your NAS can have their own drive. So that's like easy stuff to do. Um, stuff that just really just works. But if you want to actually mount your unit and have a folder in your computer that just is your NAS, this will show you how to do it. All right, let's make this work. The steps that you want to take are setting up a uh, web dev server. So we can go ahead and do that. It's going to be for your Windows devices. If you're using Linux, you can you know, mount it with several different methods. Uh, in order to do that, you'll want to open up your package center. This is going to be a third party thing. Uh, but you can actually just search for it. So as you can see here, you've got all these different options of things you can install. You need to install WebDAV server. I've already got it installed, so we open it up. And you can enable HTTP or HTTPS. We're going to be using HTTPS. And then you can check the uh, the port right here. We're using 5006 default um, for HTTPS. Very easy to, well, it's just easy to use. And then you can set up some limits down here if you'd like to. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using anonymous WebDAV, but you can do it whatever you want in your own little world. Now, once you have WebDAV set up, you'll be able to go to your control panel. And then from there, you need to go to external access. And then you're going to need to configure your router for WebDAV. So in order to do that, you can set up your router by clicking here. It'll go through a router setup process. And then once you're done with that, you can actually forward the ports here. Now, if you don't want to do it right here inside the Synology uh, you know, program, you can go and forward the ports manually. If you know what you're doing in your router, you're just going to want to forward those ports. So there you go. But let's say that this is not here. You'll just want to come over and create. Since you've installed it, it's now a built-in application. And you'll see WebDAV on the list here. I've already got it installed, so no need to do this, but it'll show up here on the list. Um, if it doesn't, you can do a custom port, but it's going to be on the list once you install it. So you got your WebDAV up and running. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is set up uh, DDNS. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. So you have all these uh, services built in that you can use. Synology, I'm gonna set this one up just so that I have it. So the Synology will be, you know, your NAS, whatever it is. Badass NAS, there we go. Badass NAS dot whatever, DS Cloud, DS My NAS, whatever. You pick the one that you like the best. And what this will do, it will allow you to just go to badassnas.synology.me from anywhere and it will connect to your NAS right through your web browser. Really easy to do. So I recommend doing that one just as a failover, fail safe, because some of these services are not controlled by Synology. And the services that are not controlled by Synology, you know, you'll maybe they go down, who knows. All right, so let's say you want to set up a DNS server, but you don't want to use, um, you know, a, a domain like .synology to whatever. You want to use your own domain name. Ours is going to be Flaming Laser Sword. So we're going to make Flaming Laser Sword be our NAS and we'll be able to just go to that domain and make it work. So you'll need to sign up for a domain wherever you get your domains. Just go to your re favorite registrar, go to Ninja Llama if you want to, whatever. Uh, get a domain and then you're going to want to mess with the DNS settings. But the first thing we need to do is pick our DDNS provider. So we got all these here on the list. Um, some of them are free, some of them are not free, most of them are not free. No IP has a service for one domain that is free with some fuss, but it'll work for free. So anyway, we need to go to no IP right now to set that up. I'll show you how to do that. All right, now I'm gonna assume that you guys already have your domain selected and registered. We'll mess with the DNS in just a second. So go ahead and create uh, an account here at no IP. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine up right now. And I'm just gonna use... So this is um, 
going to be your address here on no IP. But I'll show you guys how to take some further steps here. Don't want any special stuff. All right, create your account and then go to your email and verify it. Okay, I've verified my account. We're logged in now. And we need to get started with dynamic DNS. So go ahead and get that started here. Enter all your information here and I'll see you in a second. All right, let's get slick. So here's your, uh, your DDNS. Right now, you need to change your IP target. So you're going to set this up with your IP address, whatever it is at your office, uh, whatever it is at your place. Just, you know, this is going to be your IP address. And what this means is anytime you type this in, it's going to route back to your IP address. But we're going to take this a step farther and make it really cool. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually set up our own thing that forwards to this, which will forward to this, and it's just a much slicker way to do it. So I'm going to create a C name over here. This is a uh, Cloudflare. So what this is is my DNS. You could do this with any DNS server. I highly suggest you set up a Cloudflare account and then forward your name servers here and do it this way. So anyway, you come in here with your uh, DNS. This can be whatever you like. I'm just going to call this files. There we go. So what this is going to do is anytime I go to files.flaminglasersword.com, it's going to point me here, which is going to point to the IP address, which is going to get us to our NAS. But basically, you're going to be able to use whatever. You can even make Flaming Laser Sword, your actual URL, point to this. If, you, you know, if you're only going to be using the URL just for that. But, you know, we, we're using it this way. So files.whatever. You guys are following me, right? All right, let's finish setting things up. Now we're gonna need our hostname from DDNS, which is that, which is what I set up. And then I want your name and password so we can monitor this and keep your IP updated. Your IP address will go here on the bottom. All right, so everything is connected and normal. Now, in order to jump into this from FTTP, I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and add uh, port 5000. So I can just go ahead. If you wanna add port 5000, you can. It's up to you guys. All right, so now let's try this out. We're gonna to go to um, files.flamingladersword.com and then you want to do colon 5000 for the port. Okay, it took a few minutes for everything to update as far as all the different DNS servers and stuff, but as you can see now, we are logged in here files.flamingladersword.com and then we are on port 5000 and right here it is. You can log in from wherever you like. If you want to get this more secure, you can enable, you know, HTTPS and do uh, you know some self-signed certificates and all that sort of stuff. It's a little more advanced, uh, but you can do all that if you like. Anyway, now we can access this from anywhere in the world. As long as you've got a web browser, you can get into your stuff and you can also map this. So that's the next step. Let's map a network drive on our remote computer. So there's a few different applications that work well with this. Two of the main ones um, are NetDrive and Web, uh, WebDrive. This is a web dev client right here. Now NetDrive, I actually like a little better, but it crashes a lot on my installation of Windows 10. WebDrive has not crashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. You'll need to purchase it if you're gonna use it for a while, but it'll pay for itself the amount of stress it's gonna save you. They're both services that do cost money, but hey, you can map your drives at home. Okay, we rebooted our computer, so this will be fully installed. And now, here's what you can do um, with WebDrive. You can come and connect to all these things and mount them. So the one we're looking for is WebDAV, and I'm gonna use uh, the secure one. And remember, in the Synology, um, external connections panel, we went ahead and set up our router to forward the correct ports for this. So there we go, our URL is going to be. All right, so just put in your uh, your domain that you set up here with DDNS. Default SS, uh, or default uh, port for HTTPS is 443. And I'm gonna go ahead and modify that myself. We set up port 5006, testing that one out. All right, we can name this whatever we like. minute flaming laser sword you guys can set it up to connect at start whatever you like I'm gonna set it up to be my F drive do I have an F drive no I don't my W is fine connect it now just try it out and hey look we connected to our device so there you have it guys enjoy trying to log on to flaming to bother us I know you're gonna do it right let me know what uh, URL you guys are going to use, and let me know what your password is, too. <sighs> By the way, uh, while you're on the internet, hanging out, be sure to grab one of our mice. This is our 3360-based Swift mouse, and then we also have the standard issue, which is a very classic shape. Quite enjoy that. And then grab a t-shirt while you're there, too. This is an oldie but a goodie. We'll see you guys on the internet.
And remember to uh, some slogan. All right, bye.